بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Uh, let us repeat one, two, three, three, uh, one, three, three once in my counting. I think it's, it's maybe it's not in your counting. Uh, let, let the one out. I will read the first one and then I give it to the uh, Tilka. After talking about uh, Ibrahim and Ismail, Ishaq, and these, uh, and the, well, their, their dialogue with their children, etc., Allah said this statement in the ayah Tilka ummatun qad khalat, laha ma kasabat, lakum ma kasabtum, wa lakum ma kasabtum. This is a nation which has passed away, passed in time past. Neither you will be questioned about their, their deeds or their, their earning, nor you will, your earning will be questioned by them, and you will not be asked about what they have done. So read various translations. We'll not comment more than that because the same ayah, letter by letter, will be at the end of this block of ayahs, will come again, and then we'll make an extensive comment about it. So read the thrush. Now those, that have, now those people have passed away, unto them shall be accounted what they have earned, and unto you what you have earned, and you will not be judged on the strength of what they did. The other translation, Maybe another that, translation yeah. mm -hmm. that nation has passed away. They have what they deserve and what you and you have what you deserve. You will not be questioned about what they did. Exactly. That's we, the, the same ayah will be stated down several ayahs. And then we'll, in a conclusion of a series of ayahs, we'll comment on that. And I remember an important comment. So leave the comment at the end of the block because it fits better there. And the next ayah, وَقَالُوا كُنُوا هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارَ تَهْتَدُوا قُلْ بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنْ مُشْرِكِينَ Yeah, next ayah. And they say, be Jews or Christians, and you shall be on the right path. Say, nay, but ours is the creed of Abraham, who turned away from all that is false, and was not of those who describe divinity to aught beside God. The other translation, they said, become Jews or Christians, and you will be guided. Say, rather, we will follow the faith of Abraham, who turned away from all that is false and was not ascribed divinity has and who and was not one who ascribed divinity to anything other than God. Or oh, if you want to translate it very short, who was not from the pagans. Pagans, the one who ascribed divinity to another. But the, the, the translator insisted to uh, to uh, make it an expanded form because it, it, it clarified that uh, Jews and Christian, as at the time of the Quran at least, not in the initial religion at the time of Musa, for example, or the time of Isa, they have accumulated such deviation that it can be classified as shirk, as associated with another partners. So, so they say, uh, the Jews and Christians, the Jews say, be Jews, then you will be guided. And obviously, the Christians say the same, be Christian, they will be guided. There's no way that the Jews and Christians say, be Jews and Christians at the same time. That's not possible. So the Jews are saying, be Jewish, then you will be guided. And the Christian will say, be Christian, they will be guided. And Allah gives the answer, say, no. That rather the creed or the billah or the community or the, or the ideological community of Abraham, billah. Let's say creed is the best translation of billah here. The creed of Abraham, Hanifan, deviating away from all shirk. Hanif is the one, originally Hanif is this guy's Hanif, meaning his, his foot is twisted to the side, which is obviously a sickness. It's not a normal survey, but in the case it's used that, that even so that he twisted away from all shirk, which was regarded as the normal course of living. So he became like with a twisted foot out of completely the, 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 the standard of the, the living of, of, the, of his generation, Hanif. And this became then, uh, uh, became then a term for those who left all paganism, because the paganism was the rampant everywhere spread. Uh, religion of mankind in the time of Ibrahim and also after Ibrahim until the coming of Muhammad with the coming of Muhammad then a substantial fraction of humanity became monotheist, genuinely monotheist. Before that, Jews and Christians did have in their initiation considerable monotheism, but they have early time mixed uh, pagan and, and non-monotheistic aspects. For the Jews, we know, starting from the golden calf in the time of Musa, trying to find an idol of Allah who make a representation that Allah is best represented with a bull or with a, with a, with a calf. And the Christian, by attributing the divinity uh, to, to Christ in a complicated way, and they, and they didn't know how to fix the problem, and they tried to fix it by making what they called Okunum, uh, the Trinity, three in one or two. And Jerry, by the way, just, just a small, uh, almost like an anecdotal anecdote or a joke. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, if you read the Nicene Creed, check it in the Google and try to copy it. It will say, and we believe in uh, the, the the father, the, the, the controller of everything, etc. And in his son, begotten, not made, born, but not made, 
how this could be possibly the case, but let's leave the rationality aside. And the Holy Spirit as well. So I think that's the usually the Nicene Creed you find written everywhere as the Nicene Creed. But this is a big fat lie, because the Nicene Creed, the one enacted Nicaea, did not mention the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was kept aside because they could not agree in any formula for the Holy Spirit. And it took 30 years, maybe 30, yeah, about 30, because the next, the next council, World Council was in Constantine, 350. The Nicene Council was 323 or 324, something like that. So uh, something like 25 years later, after they have experimented with, I, by the way, I have saved these form, various formulas, some very complex, some very simple, and ultimately they agreed on a relatively simple form, which is even every simple common man can accept, and which and on the Holy Spirit, which is uh, which is uh, emerged from the Father and the Son. Um, and and the Western churches have even addition. They uh, the the the, the, the Creed is just the Holy Spirit emerged from the Father. So so both the Son and the Holy emerged. They don't say were born, emerged. And then the Western church added the so-called Philoki, or the Son statement say, emerged from the Father and the Son. This way, meaning that the Holy Spirit will be like lower than the Father. So the Father is here, the Son is here. Everyone agrees that the Son is lower than the Father, but the Holy Spirit is not equal to Son. If you go to churches, you find all these, uh, these uh, stained glass, you find the crown in the center, higher up. This represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To his right, to your left, to his right, is a lamb, lamb is representing Christ, the sacrificial lamb, which is sacrifice on the foundation of it. And in the right, you have a white dove representing the Holy Spirit. And they're usually on the same level, even in the Western chairs, in the, in the, in the, in the representation. But strictly speaking, with the Philoki, which is under controversy, the Philoki statement, which has led to the split of the Eastern and the Western church in the year 1000, uh, the, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be emerged from the relation between the Father and Son and the love to the Father to the Son emerged as a Holy Spirit. So strictly speaking, he's a little bit lower. Should be this, should be fixed like that. But this is even, even, uh, even a representation in drawing is not nice. So even in the West, they represent like that. Holy Spirit and the, and the Son in the same level, the robe and the Son in the same level. But this Philok uh, statement caused this shift, uh, the, 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 the schism between the Eastern and, and Western. Otherwise, before that, they were all one church, essentially they're called Malkani, or the Catholic, ancient Catholic church. Then they split in the Eastern Orthodox, and, and they cursed each other and declared each other to be a Catholic. So the Holy Spirit did not, was not in the Nicene Creed, was not mentioned. It was in the Constantine, but at the adjoined to the Holy Nicene Creed. And the simple minded, most simple minded common Christian, they believe that the Nicene Creed is that what was, was, was proclaimed in Nicaea. That's not true. The way it is formulated today is not the formulation which is done in Nicaea. No, that's not. This is a later addition to the Nicene Creed. But that's what they usually sold to the common public. Only when you dig deeper, you come to that. But, so these are aspects of shirk and paganism. Although it has been not, uh, not cannot be declared as, as open and clear shirk and blatant shirk because they made it one in three and three in one. Still Allah is one, but he's three, uh, three persons in one and one in three, which is impossible. But it's not a matter of discussion today. Uh, but there's another aspect of, of shirk. Some people think this is the only issue of shirk is that, that, uh, is that uh, uh, there's another aspect in shirk in, in the case of a Christian, for example, that uh, the majority of Christians agree, except the Nestorian, which are still extinct, no, no Nestorian exists today. They insist to call Maryam the mother of God. This way, because you know, the mother of God is the insist they have some kind of divinity, even if she is not divine in her sense, but the passage in Isa in her belly made her divine. Somebody will lift it up there, giving a certain divine color or something like that. That's a definitely paganism. That's a type of paganism. If representing Allah as a bull is paganism, just my representation, without claiming that he is a bull, but just a representation, a more suitable representation, which people can relate to because human beings need pictures, need, need something to touch and so on, then this is also uh, as pagan as, as, as uh, adopting the bull as a symbol of Allah SWT. That's not because the Jews say that this is, this is the bull itself is, is, uh, is Allah SWT, but it's an idol to Allah SWT. So that's one. But, it, but there's another even worse type of shirk, which is why the Jews more than a Christian, but also in both, is that they adopted the, the monks and scribes as Lord beside Allah. Although they have commanded to worship only one Lord. 
Obviously, they appointed Isa as the divine, but this is another type of divinity. But these have been appointed what's divine of Allah. And also, we know the famous hadith when Ibn Hatim said um, uh, to the Prophet, he entered the masjid by the sign of Allah Taala in the moment of Rasul, the setting the ayah. So, Ibn Hatim thought, oh, great opportunity. Now he caught Muhammad in the red handed. He told him, but it's not worship him. Because the Quran says they appointed the lords, uh, their, their monks and scribes, Lord beside Allah. And the son, Isa, the son of the Messiah, the Messiah of Maria, the Messiah, son of Mary, although they have been commanded to worship only one Lord. So we didn't worship them, because worship for them is what the usual no simple minded people think touching, making sujood, making ruku, honoration, praise, all these things. And the Rasulullah asked the question didn't they make halal haram and haram halal? Didn't they enact laws out of their own sovereignty? He said yes. So that's their worship. That's the worship. That's the divinity. Acknowledging that someone has the right of legislation, the right of defining good and evil beside Allah SWT. That's the catastrophe. That's the shirk. That's their main shirk. The Messiah will understand the reason for historic complicated things and the complicated philosophy of Okunums and the attempt to escape paganism. But this most people will not recognize as paganism. And the Jews are full of that. They are even worse than the Christian. There are so on the Talmud for stories like, for example, let's give you one story that two schools of thought were discussing an issue, fiqh issue, and then they could not settle uh, the issue who is the, who is the more uh, closer, the right one. And then allegedly Allah split the heaven and spoke to them and said the right one is party A, for example. But party A did not accept that, accept that. They argued that Allah SWT and he admitted the same mistake. So if Allah can be mistaken and prove it to be mistaken by some by some, uh, some scribes, then he is definitely not the ultimate Lord. And this is because uh, most likely the philosophy of their, their thinking the law is uh, something which has uh, some kind of intrinsic value beside the mere commandment to Allah SWT, which is a blatant mistake because Allah being the sovereign. And uh, acting on uh, with absolute freedom by the system, by being a necessary existing, his command is the ultimate law. There's no nothing else can define law except his will and command. It's utterly impossible to have any other definition. Any other definition will create contradiction. But the Jews themselves have understood that, for example, the prohibition of pigs, sometimes this fundamentally in pig, which must even Allah must order to be prohibited. No, it's not. And even if it's something in the big suggesting that he's impure for something that ought to be declared that how come the big has become impure by Allah creative act it has been appointed to be the garbage collector of the environment by whom by Allah couldn't have happened against Allah with the universe the universe designed so that in the animal kingdom there are certain animals are responsible for cleaning the mess and the biggest cleaner in the mess is the, is the poor big his job very nasty but he's not uh, he's not appointed to be eaten in that sense, he's pure, impure. But in the environment, he's a very important animal in the environment. That's his impurity. And how, how, how come that it developed like that? By Allah's design of the universe. So there's nothing, nothing is above Allah. No decision can be made without, with, without Allah's uh, decision being uh, ahead and, and, and above. It's impossible. So this is the, major, the, the most important shirk. This is the worse shirk than the shirk of appointing Isa, the son of Allah, because of certain confusion on thinking there's no way to explain that he is born from a virgin sister except by making the son of Allah. That's a blatant mistake, but it's not as bad, from my point of view, it's not as bad as appointing the scholars and the scribes lords beside Allah. So they can enact laws and even to the extreme of the Talmud that they can argue with Allah and prove him wrong. Which is just under my reason. If Allah can be proven wrong, then nothing can be proven. Then reason will collapse. Then there's no difference between wrong, wrong and right. No definition of wrong and right. No definition. Contradiction are possible. Then this is a state of mental of madness and mental institution. You have to get up to that state. So shirk is ultimately ending in madness. You, you, the one, the mushrik, ultimately, if could persisting and after. Uh, after a dialogue, a proper structured dialogue is set on shirk, he has to be locked in, in the mental institution because he, he, he's, he's accept, he accepted the definition of contradiction. The acceptance of contradiction means there's no reason. The fundamental aspect of reason is that contradiction is not acceptable. It's completely irrational and illogical and unacceptable. So, so those who, then, uh, Jews and Christians, if you follow them, 
as a time of the Prophet he was not in time of Musa, but that was just a, a minority deviation and was rebuked and corrected quickly. But later on time of Asala, you will not be guided because they have definitely some aspect of shirk in their, in their, in their beliefs, at least. And the same with the Christian. Not only the issue that the, the, the divine identity of Christ, no, no, the issues of, mon of, of, of uh, monks and scribes having, having registered, or, or at least or in their community in the informed council, having a legislative power and the power to enact laws and define good and evil. And that's a shirk, as, as blood and shirk, as the blood and shirk of appointing for, for Allah and the son or appointing for him an idol, even maybe worse, maybe one level of what, worse above that. So, so if that's not, not a way of the guidance, when shirk is going to, uh, mean, meaning uh, essentially undermining the, the ra ra all rational necessities, so what, what else to follow? Allah said, no, we follow the creed of Abraham because Abraham was pure, absolutely the uh, cont absolute contradiction of shirk in his time. And he was Hanif, he was pure from shirk. No idols, no goddesses, nothing. And he definitely was not one of the idol worshippers. No, the one who associated with Allah in the partner. So, if you want guidance and you are searching for something in history which is well established and, uh, and nobody is disputing it, a creed, then the creed of Abraham, which is the creed of Muhammad, representing you and brought forward on the table with the necessary evidences and the protected Quran, because what Ibrahim has been doing is barely protected. We have only some stories in the Old Testament which shows clearly that he's not an idol, but no doubt about that, but not enough to have a complete structural theory. So the Quran came to bring that structural theory and even advance it one, one step forward. One substantial step forward, which the rest can be left to humanity to live until the al Qiyam. But the most fundamental steps have been left in the Quran. So, no, no, we will not follow. We are not being guided by, a, by being Jews or Christian. The guidance will be by following the creed of Abraham. And that's the trick they're using now when they try to so bring religions together and so on. <clears throat> it's no problem. There's no way that dialogue between religions. That's the way it should be. Dialogue and so on. <clears throat> but they mean with bringing religions together, so it's claiming all of them are uh, follow Abraham and all Abrahamic. And since nobody should criticize the other, everyone should be nice. That's not true. That's, uh, the reality is not true. They are not follow Abraham. If they were follow Abraham, they would have abolished the shirk they have. And then they were all Abrahamic. And then by necessity, would be all Muslims. Then. Because nobody is Abrahamic in the world now, it's the Muslims. Next, I call Amanna, Lahi, or Mounzil, Elena, Mounzil, Ela, Ibrahim, or Ismail, or Ishaq, or Yaku, or Asbar. Mouti, Musa, or Isa, Mouti, and Abinam, the Rabbi, him, Lanu, Fadiq, when I had him, when I had a Muslim. So translate. Say. Just a second. Yeah. Sorry, just lost my face there. <clears throat> Sorry. Say, we believe in God. And in what has been bestowed from us on high, and that which was bestowed upon Abraham and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and their descendants, and that which was which has been vouchsafed to Moses and Jesus, and that which has been vouchsafed to all other prophets by their sustainer. We make no distinction between any of them, and it is unto him that we surrender ourselves. The other translation say, We believe in God and what was revealed to us, and what was revealed to Abraham, Ismail, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and what, what was given to Moses and Jesus, and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We do not distinguish between any of them, and we submit to him. Yeah. I think that is slightly better, because uh, the, the, the sent down, say, to, the, the, the letter, the, the preposition to is used, Mu'unzila ilayna, which has been revealed or sent down to us, to us, does not mean necessarily it came to us directly, it can be through an intermediary. And that's exactly what's for us, it came from Muhammad. So they did not say to Unzila to Muhammad, it is to us, because Muhammad is the intermediary and he reported it honestly and correctly and written down. And then they don't mention the previous prophets, he mentioned them by name, or Unzila Ilayba, what had been revealed or sent down to Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub. Then the Asbab, there's uh, the one translation is the descendants. The, uh, the classical translation is obviously the grandchildren or the descendants. Actually, uh, with Asbat has various meanings. It has been, after the revelation of the Quran, has been essentially uh, uh, reserved for the grandchildren. And in the case of Bani Israel, to the tribes. So it is the sent to the grandchildren of Yaqub, meaning the tribes, of, mean all the prophets of Bani Israel, with all of them are included in this Al-Asbat. Some people think it's Asbat, meaning that 12 sons of, uh, 
So we are called themselves directly. Yes, some of them indeed were prophets. We know what, at least one of them was a prophet and messenger. That is Yusuf, you know. About the others, we don't know. There's no evidence that they were prophets. The other 11. This, uh, the Old Testament, if you look at the Old Testament, you see so, so many uh, uh, blunders and transgressions from them and misdeeds that unlikely that they have been prophets. It's not absolutely necessary, but unlikely that they have been prophets, except Yusuf, who has been appointed a prophet and uh, and a messenger to Egypt, as we know the Quran said clearly in other places. Then, although Musa and Isa are included because they are from Asbaq, but they have been singled out because they are the main pillars of uh, what, what we call Bani Israel, the main pillars, the, the, the main peaks, which divide. Yusuf, definitely the grandson of, of Yaqub, but at the time Bani Israel were, were barely just a big family, 70, uh, according to the Old Testament. Uh, Yaqub and uh, his sons and uh, a few children, uh, a few slaves and uh, cows and camels and so on went to Egypt. I think 70 years ago, I mentioned that somehow, maybe 70 plus, but well, I say 65, 70, 75, doesn't matter. These numbers are sometimes are given like a number near 100 is called 70. But let's just say 70 in numbers. But I think they will mention by name. That's all. That cannot be called really a tribe or, or a nation yet. So Yusuf is, is included in the Asbat without mentioning his name specifically. Besides, he was and, and beside that, he was actually sent to Egypt, not to his uh, his family. His family were all believers. They didn't need the prophet in that sense, except someone calling Yaqub as the head of the family. But after that, when Basil say much longer became a big entity, big a big nation, and started the proscription, started Egypt, and Musa got them out. Musa is really the man number one. And then the conclusion of the history was Isa, so the beginning of Bani Israel as a nation or an entity with international meaning and international inter uh, character, which can fight other wars and fight nations and interact with nations and conclude treaties with Musa. For that, they were not, they were enslaved in Egypt. They were just, just a, sub, a subculture of the Egyptian culture. And uh, no, no statehood, no personality as a nation. But with Musa, it started the nation. And with Isa, was the end of the nation. It's the last one in the nation. Musa was accepted because he's the leader with God Jimmy, by the way. We mentioned some of the stories how they made his life miserable. With Isa was not accepted widely and the nation was destroyed, destroyed and disintegrated after that. The, the, the nation of Bani Israel as a nation was essentially removed from history, quickly. broke down completely. So these two are so, uh, were mentioned specifically, although they include in the asphalt in the general term. Then to make sure that Nobody will, will, will discuss any other issues of maybe there's a prophet in China, maybe Buddha is a prophet, maybe a prophet in, in, in the Native Americans, all that's possible. Whatever the prophets have received from the Lord. What they have received from the Lord, but we believe in it. And, not in, uh, and the translation with other prophets is not correct. All prophets, all prophets, including the previous one, is a clarification again. It doesn't matter uh, the linguistic and only rhetorically. It's, it's good to mention them again. It was Oti and Nebun, all what the prophets are in their Lord, the previous one mentioned, and also the other were not mentioned, and maybe unknown. Just in summary, as a blank statement. We don't make any distinction between them in matter of reporting what they have received from their Lord. All of them are equal rank in the matter of report. There are obviously different ranks in the virtue and the historic effect. <laughs> no, no, no one in his right mind will equate Musa, who established a complete nation, let us say, with, uh, with an unknown prophet, maybe Buddha, and if he's a prophet. It will be unright. Musa is the establishment of a nation, has more effect in history. Buddha does not have any effect as a person yet in history. Later on, Buddhism, after he has been declared divine and his story has been mutilated. That's for example. Example, uh, we cannot equate, for example, the matter of virtue and closing to Allah uh, for, Ishaq, for example, or Yaqub with Ibrahim. Ibrahim is the, is the friend and the darling of Allah SWT. Those are close to Allah SWT, but they don't reach the rock of Ibrahim, it's Khalil. He's a, he's, he and Muhammad are the only Khalil. The others are not Khalil. But they are, they are beloved and they're close and friends, but not Khalil. So they are very strong. But here, in matter of prophecy, in matter of what had revealed to them. All is revealed to them is the same level of binding according to the commandment. Right? Binding for the nation they sent to them and binding in the time it has been before abrogation. That is at the same level of authority, the same body. That's meaning, we make no distinction. When you say Isa is better, so we ignore Musa, no. Musa is better, we ignore Isa, that's not correct. That's not true. Or Ibrahim is better than all we ignore, ignore these, these are all the same, at the same respect. 
and the same uh, rank in matter of reporting from Allah Sa'ala and matter of authority reporting from Allah Sa'ala. Despite the, for instance, in the rank in the eye of Allah and their places in paradise, that's an issue which is not relevant to us. That's relevant for them and their Lord. They have the relation to their Lord. Everyone has his own special relation. For example, Musa is known to be quite, uh, <laughs> what you, <laughs> to use a, a polite term, <laughs> like a bit spoiled and or one who never stopped complaining. Always he's complaining, always he's asking for things, always he's uh, objecting. And in, in the hadith of Isra, uh, the, uh, the hadith says, obviously, this is not Tawata, we cannot take it as Aqidah, but it's, it, it's good to, to, to analyze it. And they say, I passed at Musa, and after I left him in his grave, he started supplicating and complaining to Allah what's happening, what is going on, how can a young man like that is going to get a better nation than myself, etc., all of these things. <laughs> and then the person looked at Jibreel and said, what was Musa is saying? Say, everyone knows that Musa is taking liberty with Allah Ta'ala. He's always complaining. Leave them. He is, he has, he and his Lord uh, having their own special relation. Don't put your nose there. So Musa has this speciality. The Prophet was the opposite. He was barely complaining and he was very bashful in asking Allah for things, uh, which he could have asked and received. Like, for example, coming back from the book, for the book they have uh, difficulty having food and uh, then uh, the said, Wallahi. If I'm not ashamed of my Lord, I would have asked that, that you be supplied to me. But I will not ask out of being, uh, be, being respectful and shameful. Musa would have asked without any hesitation. Two different characters. Does not mean he is less truthful, no. Does it mean he is higher or lower like than Muhammad? No, we don't know. We have no idea. Most likely, he has the same rank or the Prophet has a higher rank being a Khalid. But he has in Yom Al-Qiyamah, he's the first one to be resurrected, for example. When the Prophet wake up, he sees that Musa is still awake. Uh, is it he awake or ahead of him? Or uh, he, he has enough, he has enough shock, or the, the shock of Yom Al-Qiyamah, like the shock in Mount Sinai, that was enough when he was, uh, he was, he was taken by, 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 by the shock when he asked out to see Allah SWT. That was enough. So he's saved from the one in Yom Al-Qiyamah. We don't know. But in matter of ranking, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, in matter of uh, truthfulness and matter of uh, the, the authority of that word, Allah, they are equal. Actually, they had a nice episode between, between uh, a Jew and uh, Abu Bakr. And, uh, and uh, the Jew said, by the one who, may, who elevated Musa above the whole world. And Abu Bakr was upset. And Abu Bakr sometimes had like a, a toughness in his character and get easily excited. He said, you mean he's LA? Elevated above Muhammad and slapped the Jew. And the Jew complained to Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam settled the matter and rebuked Abu Bakr for the slap and say, don't make ranks between the messenger of Allah. Although Allah made ranks. Allah makes them. Don't make ranks. Don't make this one higher and this one lower. That's what not. That, is, that tend to be provoked. If the Jew is stupid and make a provocation, just forget, uh, just turn away and don't indulge in this. This is not a business to be indulged in. So if some Jew tell you, who oh, the one elevated Musa above all the creation? Okay. He's definitely about the creation. No problem. The other prophets are equal and higher and lower than Musa in the of Allah, but they all of them are the same. That's the meaning of the Nuhar Qabayna. We don't. Allah can make his distinction and may rank them the way he likes, but not for us. And then we rank them accordingly. And if someone disputes that because he's an unbeliever like a Jew, we well, no need to enter into and to dispute or dialogue about thing, something which is completely uh, mute and futile. It's a, this kind of arguments are completely futile and empty. They do not lead to anything. They lead to confrontation. And, and instead of getting the dialogue and the discussion on the rational ground, it gets off the rational ground. Instead of bringing things together and uh, solving the problems and uh, uh, showing uh, show clearly where is the deviation of the problems, it gets on, on a tangent which is completely unproductive. So we don't make any distinction with the prophets in matter of prophethood and their authority and their reporting from Allah SWT. And we surrender to Allah SWT. We are surrendering to Allah. Then the Quran says, continue for an amal with them and be faqadita. Now this is the guidance. If they believe the same way you believe, then they are guided. Not being Jew and Christian or being with that belief. So we don't, we, should, we are not even, when we not even say, uh, we cannot even say if they believe like the Muslim. No, will, but that's what the Muslim are believing in. What that, in the objective statement which are passed, that's the one which make you guided. Not because he's a Muslim and he may come with a claim which is wrong or right, no. If they believe in that, what you have believed in, what you have believed in is that previous statements, 
and the whole Quran in that objective set of, of, of statements, then anyone believe that you and the other ones will be God. And if they turn away, they are just in a dispute, in a shikaq. They, they, they decide to take another confrontation. They start to have a split. Like a shikaq is like you have, you have like, like a ditch or you have like a, like a, uh, or a valley separating in, in a high plane. They prefer to be the other side instead of overcoming this, 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 uh, this ditch by going around to a bridge or building a bridge. They prefer to, no, no, we prefer to have the ditch and confront you across the bridge. That does not will bring any truth or co commitment. Because if you have such a ditch separation of two groups who uh, differ on fundamental statements which have, uh, uh, can be proven to be wrong or, or right, or false or not false, then it can't be possibly that, that both sides are, are right. One of them, that both could be wrong. That's a possibility. Like, like a communist on one side and capitalist on the other. Both are wrong. Both are on both sides. And the ditch between the ditch between in the domain of Kufr. But the only way to overcome that is objective statement with, with proofs and, and evidences. So they are in a, they are insisting on to be separated and setting themselves as a separated just for Shifaq. They are not willing to enter in any rational dialogue and bring evidences until things are settled properly. Allah will be sufficient for you, protect you from them and for your mischief and for the insult, whatever that comes from them. Allah is the one all hearing and read the translation. And then we have some, some small net, uh, net of points in this ayah. Which you can go ahead. Translation. And if others come to believe in the way you believe, they will indeed find themselves in the right path. And if they turn away, it is but they who will be deeply in the wrong. And God will protect thee from them. For he is alone, all hearing, all knowing. Because Other translation? <laughs> if they believe as you believe, they are guided. But if they turn away, they are in dispute. God will protect you from them, and he hears all and knows all. Yeah, okay. that's, that's what I explained. Uh, the, uh, the small anecdotes is the word, Allah. This is one word written, uh, if you look at the Mus'haf, written as one word. But it's, uh, it's uh, first of all, it is the longest word in the Quran. It has uh, nine letters, excluding obviously the vowelization. If you add the vowelization, it will become much more linear. But in Arabic, we don't add the vowelization as, as, as letters. In the second letter, in English, it will be uh, So it, we have fa, that means then, uh, after that, there's the ant, which, uh, which indicates following immediately, essentially. Sa, the scene is the one who indicates the future. Allah will in the future, like the will in English. It is done in the sa which enters on the verb in the present form. So the verb in the present form, if you put the scene, sa, in the beginning, it will be in the future. It will turn it into the future. Yeah, the verb is yakfi, sufficient, will suffice, suffice. Suffice whom? Suffice you. From them, in English, we must have a preposition like fa, like from them or suffice against them. In Arabic, we don't need suffice you, them. Suffice you against them. So in Arabic, it says, suffice take two, uh, acted upon two, uh, what they call it, accusative, two accusative, whatever it is. And where is the acted upon? Where is the nominative? After that, the separate word, Allah. So this is this is the one which is uh, nine letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, eight, nine, three, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, seven, eight, nine, seven components and the number of letters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think, ten letters. So it's the longest word in the Quran. You, someone could ask, what's the longest word in the Quran? That's the longest one. And someone say, can you give me a word which, which is one word, but uh, composed out five components? This is, the, I think, the only one which can be composed of five components. I don't know if in the Arabic language you'll find one which have more than five components. That's one of them. Allah. Have five components. The seen the verb yakfi, the, uh, the, the, the pronoun, you and the pronoun them five five components and the letters I think ten nine or ten and who is the one who will, will be sufficing for you against them or, 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 or confronting them is Allah for sake of Allah no, it's just a linguistic small issue uh, yeah, just a, a, a funny point no more than that the next ayah is have maybe some view a little bit aspect of a deeper meaning. Subhanallah, we are from Allah. Subhanallah, we are from Allah. Let us read the translation. See what how they translated the word Subha. Say, our life takes its hue from God, and who would give it? 
give a better hue to life than God if we but truly worship him. The hue is like a color, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read another translation. This is God's identifying color. And who is better than God at giving us a color of identity? And it is he whom we worship. Yeah. So, so there, there's, there, there's a bit of struggle, which is understandable for the word Sibra. Sibra, definitely, Sibra is initially on the most, mostly used, especially in modern Arabic after the Quran has been settled and, and the, well, the language, Arabic language advanced, it become a language of a cultural nation, etc. Uh, sibra, sibra means essentially color or hue. That's true. But in ancient, it means also um, um, anointment. It means even baptization. So because the Jews and Christians have some kind of baptization, a wash, like for Christian baptization is essential. You have you have to give the, the baby when born, put it in, in the, in the said, in a, in a specific processed water, processed water because the church seems to do that and make some prayers on it. But in time of John the Baptist, Yahya, it was just sinking in the river of Jordan. That's it, just a symbolic act of purifying yourself from the past and coloring yourself and cleaning yourself and then gaining a new color. Or you and you and you clean skin, so uh, sub and so on could could be meaning baptized uh, baptization also. But the translation of you is good. It's, it's actually rhetorically very nice. This is because if this is the hue or the color given by Allah, it gives you a certain it gives you a certain color, a certain taste, a certain appearance. And whose color or his appearance or his view is better than the one of Allah? And we are, we are surrendering to Allah. So if you, if you have if you're, if you're giving yourself like a, a certain color or certain a certain baptization or certain process of uh, this process is the process made by Allah. It is definitely sunnah after embracing Islam to take a shower. That's a sunnah. Uh, well, but it's not obligation, and most likely it will. It has to be done because most likely the one embracing Islam did not have a, before that a Muslim from Janaba or. A, Although it's not obligation on him anyway, because he's not a Muslim, so it is desirable to have a Muslim, so they have like, like a, a physical separation uh, between uh, the time of Kufr and time of Islam. And it's, it has also some symbolism, like the symbolism of what Yahya was doing in the Jordan, when the people come for repentance, he put them in the river and washed them. Symbolically, the past is gone and washed away, now the future starts the same here. So this is that's what has been mentioned above. The strict monotheism and the fall of Abraham in the in the simple, straightforward, reasonable religion, rational religion, but also easy religion. And this is if if you if someone accept that, then he accepts the hue which Allah has has defined as the proper hue for human beings. And this is the best hue you could have. Any other hue will not know enough to compete with Allah. So neither the hue, nationalism, no tribalism, anything that will not be ever whatever it gives you an identity and give you a color and give you a hue and give you a taste will never be as good as Allah's hue and color, everything. And if it gives you, it will be inferior and it should be some lower and subordinate to Allah's hue. Otherwise, you are not a believer and you are a mushrik. Sure. If, if someone regards himself identity, for example, I am a British Muslim, British first Muslim, then he's not a Muslim anymore. Because but my, what do you mean with British first? What does it mean? What's your identity? Because it was supposed to be a lie and friend with Allah, his messenger, and his and the believer first. Then you may be British, you may be from a tribe of grocery like myself, you may be Chinese, you may have a flat nose, maybe big big lips, that's all fine, no problem. So can I identify you in your appearance. If I see someone in the street, I say, did you see the man over there? You mean that, that black man with the big lips and so on? Just a description. There's nothing negative with that. But that's not the you which makes his identity in the sight of Allah and make him put his place in the universe. Should not be the one. It is maybe part of identity, but it's not the one who should be the dominant defining identity. Yeah, what was the question? So, Sheikh, would, that, would, would it be close to, so the, there's a linguist, there's a metaphorical description than the linguistic or the technical definition. Would it be more closer to Millah then? Would it be what? Closer to Millah or Deen. No, that is more like what characterizes you outside. Yeah, that's your milla, your deen, your, your milla, your creed, is that what give you the color. Okay. Or give you the identity. Or took the, 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 the hue or the color, which is physically visible, to represent the, your identity. Your identity that you are, a, you are a believer, and you are a monotheist, and you are Hanif, and you are a mushrik. That's okay. your identity. 
that's your fundamental identity and this is the identity which allah wanted humans to, to adopt not your identity that you, your father is called so and so on and you have his genes that's part of your structure your physical structure but it's not your identity not the shoes and identity you, have, you should have adopted that is the identity which is forced on you by by the physical condition of the universe it's completely irrelevant you are born in britain maybe of, of less saxonic descent you have no choice in that this is forced on you and you may be told born tall because your ancestors have, have that uh, that nice you know being tall if you got tall being nice or most likely be what the guy is guys is really well built and capable of, of defending yourself and fighting but that's not part of your real identity which makes you human being in the universe your identity is you are created for worship if you are a thick man or eastern you're worshiping Allah SWT. and that's the purpose of creation that gives you identity all other things are creative creative act acts of Allah in the universe is not that what Allah should to be giving you identity and account to you in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That's the meaning of it. So it's choosing the, the physical aspect of color and so on to represent the abstract uh, concept of identity, self-definition, self-image. So, so if, if uh, uh, there's a hadith, for example, that uh, one from Bani Israel at the time of Musa, and arrogant, someone arrogant from maybe one of the, they regard, many say were at that time, or the, or the 12 tribes, maybe someone regard themselves as higher than the others, maybe the ones descending from Yusuf say we are the higher one, or the one descending from Levi, Lawi, they are the, the priests and so on, the, the, the clergy, are the higher one. So he was disputing with with um, with uh, someone who has, his descent is maybe questionable, maybe he's not even Israelite, but he's allied with them, and he lived with them. So he, who is allied with people, he's one of them. And uh, that arrogant one said to the, uh, the, the poor guy who doesn't have any high genealogy or I say, 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 tell me who your father and grandfather. My father is this and this and I mentioned 10. All of them were Kafir. Maybe was, possibly this is one who, uh, because when he started in Egypt, some they become Mortad and become idol worship also. Not all of them stayed in Tawheed. And then the, 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 the other guy answered, my father is Islam. That's all that I belong to. And that's and hadith said Allah uh, revealed to Musa, tell the one who was proud of ten of his fathers and godfathers, who all of them kafir and in hellfire, he will join them in the hellfire also too. And tell the one who is his father is Islam, he will be separated and he will be entering the paradise with his father and the like of his father. So this is the idea that Allah wanted human to be. Disregarding what's happening about the creative act in the universe. Uh, the the uh, result. That's, just, that's not in you. That's not your choice. That's not. That you are a Chinese is not your choice. You should not be proud to be a Chinese or not proud or feeling the low or high. Or you are you are black, um, deep black, blue black, like say, like, like in, 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 what they call Negro, not Abyssinian and so on, which are like green black or like more seen half Semitic. Well, that's fine. No problem. I just show you Allah because you are born in that place with this genealogy over. Hundreds of thousands of generations, maybe, uh, developed this way to fit in this environment uh, perfectly and nicely. That's it. That's not your choice. Have that good choice. You show you that what you chose to be, that's your identity. That's, that's, that's your problem. So, all of these racism and nationalism and so on, all of these identities that people try to attribute to them, all of that is in vain. It's not going to get them anywhere. It's not a Sabbath Allah. It is inferior to Sabbath Allah, and sometimes it's, if it's contradicting Sabbath Allah, will end the people into, the, into their, their disaster and demise. The same with Iblis. Iblis started that. He said, my, my origin is fire. Somehow he concluded in his mind that fire is superior to mud, even if fire is superior to mud. That's not just enough support to be your identity. Not, that's not what, what made you join the angels, according to the stories that he was raised from a jinn and joined because of his piety and good deeds. It is your devotion to Allah, and submission to Allah. That's what that's it. And uh, regarding who's the only and ultimate Lord, that's meaning, meaning, meaning of worship. That's the meaning of Tawheed, that he's the ultimate Lord, absolutely and unnegotiable, cannot be questioned. So when you give a command, there's no issue if you are superior to Adam in, in genealogy. Maybe it's true, but it's not relevant. But relevant is Allah commands. That's relevant. The moment Allah swear does that, that becomes disputed on any other ground, Tawheed is annihilated and finished. And your identity is gone. You become then a shaitan. You become the out of fire. 
You are not become a believer. You are not become an, an equal to the angels and are joined to the angels. You are gone. The same with every other, other identity. So this is really sibra, meaning here, this is taking something from the, uh, physically and, 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 and you can touch and feel, because human beings need also some physical references, because all, all our, most of our experience and information come from the immediate experience and sensual experience. So taking the term sibra, being a baptism with water or being color, that's all physical, representing the symbolism of the identity. Say, قل أتحاجوننا قل أتحاجوننا في الله وهو ربنا وربكم ولنا أعمالنا ولكم أعمالكم ونحن له مخلصون Read this one, this is a very important one also in the dialogue with the, those who claim to be having revelation and having roots going back to the prophets yeah. Say to the Jews and the Christians Do you argue with us about God? But he is our sustainer as well as your sustainer and unto us shall be accounted our deeds and unto you your deeds, and it is unto him alone that we devote ourselves. Other translation? Say, do you argue with us about God when he is our Lord and your Lord? We have our works and you have your works, and we are sincere towards him. Yeah. So that's 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 the, the main argument which Muslims have been all advocated at the time of Allah is that our Lord and your Lord, even if you have some maybe misconception about Trinity and some misconception about Allah like the Jews, is essentially the same Lord. You have misconception, this misconception can be cleared and, and can be cleaned away by the Quranic revelation, which removes some of the accumulated mistakes and, and, and the blunders of the past. That's fine, that's not a problem. And for ours, our deeds will be accounted for them and for your deeds, so why the argument? Everyone will be accounted his own deed. There's, no, there's nothing to do with, the, with being, uh, that uh, being uh, uh, labeled as a Jew, Will, will make you accounted differently than someone labeled a Muslim or seven Chinese. That's it. The accounting will be for everyone on his own deeds or based on the, in the, in the, in the creed. And we are devoted to Allah, whatever you are, really. Whatever. On the other side, unfortunately, we see, for example, especially in Christian in modern time, they are disputing this, this point. Here. Actually, Allah is, uh, uh, is some kind of God, uh, the, uh, the moon god of Arabia which is utter nonsense, it's even supported by no information of, of archaeology or something like that. And the Kaaba was like, all Hindus claim the Kaaba was like a Shiva temple and things like that. This is all nonsense. The Kaaba is well known, the idols there are known, the idols are mentioned. Nobody denied that they were idols. They were placed by the Arab, at least since the time of Christ, when they got, when they were derived to uh, straightforward open paganism by uh, Amr al Hayy al Khuzai. May Allah curse him, who imported idols at all. They were, for example, idols like Hobal, who people have difficulty uh, giving it any connection to other places. But actually, I, I, my best guess of Hobal is it's a very an Arabization of Habalu, Abolo, Abolo, and they made it Habalu, Obal, Hobal, and they became Hobal, most likely. But then we have a Lat and Uzza and so on, that these are Semitic gods, well known and so on. They imported idols, but no one ever, ever mentioned that, that it was an Indian idol there or Shiva. But there's no reason for it to hide. It's the same. <laughs> What's the difference between importing an idol from Iraq or from India? <laughs> so it's a utter nonsense. And the, the moon god, yeah, there is a moon god, it's known. And it's, it's connected with, with, uh, with wood in, in Saudi Arabia. Nobody was connected with any of the gods of the deity of, uh, of Mecca or that uh, the Kaaba is a, is, a, is, a, is a moon deity uh, temple or something like that. They invent things of this. The only thing is that they wanted. Just to say, no, no, we don't have the same God. You are actually moon God worshiper. The, their, their calamity was completed by when recent research dug out uh, uh, old uh, Aramaic and uh, Syriac documents of the Christian and so on. And it turned out that, uh, that uh, the divine name, Allah's name in Syriac, well before Islam, this was Allah. Because they don't have Arab, they don't have Dhamma and Rafa and Kasa, they have Allah. Allah. So they are stuck now. So Allah is the one. And Isa was talking about Allah, so most likely he was talking also about the moon god. <laughs> These people are jokers. But the problem, if you, if you are in dispute and shikaq, like the ayah said, then you will try to find any flimsy things to hang out. And then you just disgrace yourself. By all of this, this, this nonsense they are talking, they have disgraced themselves. Nothing else. Next ayah, Am yaquluna, inna Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Yaqub wa Asbab, Asbata kanu hudan wa Sara, kul antum a'lam min lah. ومن أظلم ما كتم شهادة عنده من الله ما الله بغافل عما تعملون 
and then again rebuking them for a statement which is manifestly by their own admission historical for us. Read the translations. Do you claim that Al, that Abraham and Ismail and Ishaq and J Jacob and their descendants were Jews or Christians? Say, do you know more than God does? And who could be more wicked than he who suppresses a testimony given to him by God? Yet God is not unmindful of what you do. Or do you say that Abraham, Ismail, Is Isaac, Jacob and the tribes were Jews or Christians? Say, do you mo know more than God does? And who is more wicked than the one who conceals a testimony from God? God is never unaware of what you do. Yeah. So they were claiming, oh, actually, the Jews claiming, the Christian even worse, but the Jews, let's say Jews, they, they may have some point in some aspect. They claim that Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, they were Jews and Aswab, which is manifestly wrong. The Nasara even worse, the Christian. Religion. Why? Because if we define Judaism in, 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 in the minimal, the minimal definition is it from Musa onward. Maybe derived from them when Musa said to Al-Khana, Inna hudna ilayk. We are, we are returning to you. The, the, the word hudna, hada yahud, or hudna, and, and the prophet hud is coming from like, like we repented to you. We are turning back to you. They repented. That's like, like the Protestants, is because they were objected to Shesh and became protesting, they became protestant. And then everyone forgot the origin. So the protest became almost like a new name for, for, for a sect or a religion. But the reality, that's the origin of it. They were protesting the Shesh and the Pope. And his translation became called Protestant, the protesting one, the Protestants. The same with the hood, because the, the hood, the, the originally, originally it was we we repented to you. Like after all these events and golden calf and so on, there was an occasion for Allah SWT, when Musa addressing Allah said, in the like let's assume this is the first time they can't call you said, We are the hood, we are the one who repented to Allah. That's fine. And for often odd, but definitely that's long according to their description. They had long after Ibrahim, long after Ismail, long after so this label has been enacted long after this, and also Al Asbab, Al Asbab, the tribes, meaning obviously uh, starting with, with Yusuf and possibly other uh, of his his brother who have been prophethood. We don't know, I'm not sure which one, I'm sure only about Yusuf. Maybe one or two of them are, have been prophets, maybe Lawi, Levi, who was a prophet, I don't know. And that they were prophets, the judges, until the time of uh, uh, before the judges, in in, in where they are under the uh, in the yoke of uh, of, uh, uh, of of the Pharaoh. Uh, and Ibn Hazm say that the mother the mother of Musa was a prophetess, and he has a point of view. We'll discuss about uh, can prophets be male or female? We we'll discuss with you, of course, inshallah. Uh, uh, these are from the Asbab. so you cannot label them with who definitely Asbab. not the later Asbab after Musa. But at least that, this, 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 this block, I cannot be labeled Hood or Yahud. They are not, they are not yet having this label. They are some other label, but not this one. For the Christian, it's even worse because there is a the Nasarin, the following, the Isa of Nasar, Nasar. By the way, that's their, their own name, which they're using even in Arabic for until the time of Rasul Salaam. Because the Quran says, when the Dina Kalu in Nasar, who do you say, we are Nasarin, we are Nasara. Independent of that, where Nasara has come from, that we are the supporter of Isa, from Nusra support or from this from the village of uh, uh nasir nazaret whatever it is they their own self labeling they're labeling in in the in, in the in the greek tradition and the latin tradition with christian actually was uh, interestingly it seemed to be they were world christian first in antioch later and most likely by people hostile to uh, to to the nazarene the alien Nazarene. most like it was making like like a mockery they look at those who claim they follow the Messiah. The Messiah is the Messiah, but the Christian is, 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 the, is the Latin and the, 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 uh, the Latin of, 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 of Messiah. They look at the Messianic. Uh, most like it was a mockery. And amazingly, all Latin and, uh, and, and Greek speaker, speaker adopted that name for themselves. The insult, the, the, they accepted the insult or the mockery as a name of themselves. It was not, the, it was not according to the, to, to the, to the stories in, in the act of. Uh, of the apostles, it doesn't seem to be it has been intended to to be uh, to be a praise because the first time they were called Christian in Antioch, in Antioch, in Antakya, long after uh, Isa was ascended, and after even Paul was there uh, starting to, uh, to 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 carry the message and so on with his own style and his own uh, deviations. But in the event of that, 
they were called the messianic and messiah and so on. Most likely as a kind of mockery or insult. And <laughs> amazingly, they adopted the insult as their own name. But the, the Syriac speaker and the Arabic speaker persisted on the old names until the time of Islam. Evidence, the Quran says, from those who said, we are Nasara. So it's not that the, 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 the Allah gave them a name who did not choose by themselves. No, he gave them their name. Qalu inna Nasara. The one who said, we are Christian, we are Nasara. We are Nasarina. Nasara. Which means either Ansar, somehow died of the supporter of Isa, or from the village of Isa, Nazareth. Like he was called in the, in the New Testament in various places, the one for Nazareth, Nazareth, Nazareth. So whatever, these are much later. So those who can claim they are Nasara, that's after Isa. This is long after all of these generations which have never had this label whatsoever. Neither because of location, nor because they are supporter of Isa, because the Isa did, did exist long after that just recently a thousand years ago so this is just manifestly yeah, just manifestly uh absurd to claim these have been jews or christian or something like that then allah said are you do you know more than allah and then he rebuked them because they have the witness that it's not true do you know better than allah and who is more unjust and wrongdoer than the one who could who conceal a witness from in his hands from allah you have the various scriptures despite of all re-editing and or fabrications on, they are clearly testifying to this historic general line of history is undisputably well established in the scripture. And Allah is well, well aware about what you are doing. Developing lies and claiming, attributing claims which are, cannot stand on their feet, etc. Now the ayah which came earlier is repeated again, read it again. Okay. Now those people have passed away, unto them shall be accounted what they have earned, and unto you what you have earned, and you will not be judged on the strength of what they did. Other translation, that nation has passed away, it has received what it deserves, and you will receive what you deserve. You are not accounted accountable for what they did. And this is exactly word by word, and little by little, and even vowel by vowel, the repetition of the ayah earlier, to conclude this chapter before starting the issue of the change of the Qibla. Now this ayah is clear, the meaning is very clear. That's this, these nations which passed away, specifically Abraham, Ismail, etc., and even and the earlier mission of Isa, and the, the, the rest is now the fable of the time of the Prophet, and the, Yom, and the people uh, after that in the Yom al -Qiyama. These are nations which have passed away. They will get what they deserve, on reward and possibly punishment. Obviously, the mentioned here are all of them will be rewarded. They are not punishable. But in their generation, they have been criminals. They have been like in the time of Musa, it was Pharaoh, a major criminal and, 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 and tyrant. He will get his punishment. And you will get what you will do. Neither you will be questioned about what uh, what what uh, what Pharaoh did and your responsibility because community and responsibility were not present there, nor he will be asked you about, about your deeds because you, you, you came into existence after he's gone. Allah will not ask him what did the Jew thousand years of you did. This is impossible. Uh, why why the, the ayah is test here a second time is to conclude this chapter and assert this fundamental principle that every generation, every peer, every ummah, every community is, uh, especially those who passed away, is responsible for its own deed and, uh, and uh, they will be accounted on their own deeds and that's what they have earned and you will be accounted on your deeds and uh, it does not exclude as the previous nation if they established, for example, uh, 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 a negative, a negative uh, tradition or established something negative which inherited by future tradition that they will not have, not have a share from the sin of the future generation without reducing the sin of the other ones because they are the one who created or invented this. That does not exclude because it's part of, that's a product and the result of their deeds. So nobody should think that, for example, uh, when that uh, there will be any issue of contradiction, as Allah said, whoever is killed unjustly until Yom al Qiyamah, the first one who, uh, the son of Adam, the first son of Adam, he killed his brother, will have a share of this blood on his neck because he's the first one who sent al Qatl, who established the Sunnah of Qiyamah. settling disputes, well, in this time with his own brother, but settling disputes by shedding blood. This is a very evil Sunnah a very evil tradition which this man established. So until Yom Qiyamah, bit of the sin there, go to him, without reducing the sin of the criminals. 
It does not absolve them. You can kind of say, it's actually Kabil, what's his name, invented killing and so on, a settling dispute by killing. <laughs> it does not absolve you. You have the complete sin on your neck, but a copy of it or a part of it will go to him also because he started this evil tradition. The same, for example, the first one who is, uh, established the usury banking and so on, the Bank of England and so on, the, the, the most prominent one, they will have a share of the sin of all uh, usury until Yom al Qiyamah in England and elsewhere the one in its, it, its, in its uh, territories and its uh, covered areas, etc., because they were they invented that evil system. Besides their evil, the result of their evil act themselves, the direct punishment for their act, a share of that. So that does not contradict, does not exclude that, uh, because they deserve that. They created this tradition and they established this system, this evil system, which persists and continues, and they will get a share of that on their neck. So it doesn't contradict. That's the uh, remark number one. Remark number two is uh, an interesting point, is that all what the ayah is saying is that every generation, every nation is responsible for its deeds, and uh, they will be getting what they deserve, including what the result of their deeds have in future generation. And it may have results, may have negative results, and they are responsible for establishing this, and etc. And other generation is responsible for its own deed, ex ex uh, in including what is the effect will be useful or propagate in the future. And Allah will not question about those and those about they have the other have that. That's, that's the individuality of responsibility, which is uh, expressed in the extreme in the Makki Quran. In, in the various ayahs say, La taziru wa ziratun It's one of the major, major enactments which Ibrahim did in his time. And, uh, with the Quran, Ibrahim alladhi waffa, Alla taziru wa ziratun. Ibrahim who completed the message, brought the people the fundamental message, which made him the guide of mankind. One fundamental principle of that message is, La taziru wa ziratun wa Nobody should carry the sin or the blame or the punishment for someone else's deed. That's one of the most fundamental principles of justice in time past of Ibrahim and before, and after that, unfortunately, until now, families are punished for the crime of their children. Whole nations are punished for the crime or the section of some uh, section of their people. Although they may not support it, they may be even rejecting, they may disavow, it doesn't matter for tyrants. For example, if you are an opposition in some tyrant Muslim countries or other countries, they they try to, to get to your family. Although they may be they're definitely not involved in the action. And some they even de declare that they are this hour, this hour. Still, they go and imprison them and put them under pressure. One, one of the tricks that they use is that to use that to put pressure on the one who is opposing. So he may come back or they can apprehend him. And this is all a major, major break of this most fundamental Abrahamic tradition of, of, of principle. That is the zero to the Ukra. One is the Salim Masa'ah. The human being will earn only that what he has earned, which is on deeds. When Nasa'u Safayura and his 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 struggle and his work will be seen, will not nothing will be neglected. Summa Jazahu Jazala. He will be rewarded the most complete reward. Most complete reward meaning for good deeds, he will be rewarded the, for the good deeds and more from Allah generously. And for the bad deeds, he will be rewarded the minimum punishment possible by Allah's mercy. But he will. There's no escape. These are the principles of Ibrahim. So this is the enshrine them in this spiritual context. But also, now what I want to do, other comment, is that you hear this ayah often invoked by, uh, by so Salafi and plenty of Al-Sunnah when the discussion about what has been disputed between the Sahaba. And they have put in, uh, in, uh, in their book of, book of Aqidah, like a Tahawiyah, a statement like, and we hold back, we do not comment, we do not comment about that what has been happening between the companions of Allah. And they regard they sell that to the Ummah as this aqeedah. First of all, that's the catastrophe, not how shari, not like it is, it is nice, uh, it is, uh, uh, it's avoid sin, it gives you more, more hasanat. No, it is aqeedah. You have to believe in that as a creed. They make that face with aqeedah. And if you argue with them, they will bring this ayah. They, or this is a nation who passed, they will be accounted for your deeds. But that's not why I'm not discussing about country. I'm not accounting them for their deeds. I'm saying this one has committed that. So for example, that, that, that has been entered the book of Aqidah, essentially to protect Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Essentially. Because if you discuss Muawiyah, you must have to make a conclusion that he's the Baghi, according to the Hadith al-Mutawatirah. 
and, and that he reserved power. This is the major transmission. He must be evaluated. You must make witness for the statement, for this fact. Say, no, 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 no. He may be mushtahid, he may be not. Better don't discuss the whole matter. Just cover it up. But this is another fundamental principle of Islam. Uh, when and invoke this ayah, so it does not fit in that. Because we are not accounting him. Allah is accounting him in the Qiyamah. We are not claiming that his deeds, uh, although some of his deeds had implication, which have uh, result until today, if he's sinful in that, that sin will be, part of it will be copied on him. No doubt, according to the general principle. But well, that's not our issue. So, is he barrier? Was he, ju was he ju just ruler? Was he the appropriate ruler? Should he have not resolved the power? What did he, what, what did he do is correct? Because most of these, unfortunately, Islamic scholars in the two first centuries, most of them, not all of them, were government scholars. They want to justify the government, it's oppression. And the best justification, one of the Sahaba did that. Uh -huh. And he uh, appointed his son as a Khalifa. So this is perfectly fine. And he's Mujtahid. It's a good Ishtihad. And the uh, Ishtihad of Sahabi is a valid Ishtihad that you can follow, at least. You can follow if it's not even obligatory. And the whole Ummah agreed and surrendered that it must be Ijma'ah. That's, the, that's the trick. And they try to escape with this ayah. But in that, in that endeavor, they neglected the fundamental command of Allah Taala about to witness to the truth and stand firm to it. Look, for example, what Allah Taala says about, about the, the issue of, of, of standing upright and uh, be, be a witness. Two major eyes about witness and standing firm and uh, pronouncing the truth and evaluating things truthfully. Let me read them so I don't make any mistake. One ayah, which is the famous ayah in Surah Al-Nisa, Allah said, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu kunu qawameena bil qis shuhada alillahi aw walau ala anfusikum aw alwalidayni wal aqrabin inya kun ghaniyan aw faqiran fallahu awla bihim wa la tabtahu al hawa an ta'adilu la tabtahu al hawa an ta'adilu wa in talwa utadu fin allaha yabkana ma ta'aluna khabira So the first ayah say because some people may feel inclined that if I do the witness against someone who is poor and he has committed maybe a theft that may lead to his punishment but that's not the right way of doing things. Or if I would, if I do that witness, it may harm my, my parents or the near next of kin. So he either go to the consideration of being poor or rich, uh, uh, high in the society or low, or he go to the consideration of, uh, of, of uh, in relation. So Allah has said, do stand firm for Allah in justice and be witness of Allah because they're witness of Allah, even if it's on you. If you, if you have committed something, then you have to witness to the truth. You have no leeway to say, I have to protect myself. If you're in a witness stand, you are obliged to do that. Even on the parents, even the Akrabin, even the rich and the poor. That's all these considerations. All of these, Allah is closer to them and will take care of them. So don't follow desire. This is my next of kin. I have to be nice to him. This is a poor guy. Maybe I should cover for him. But if you deviate from that, of Tu'lidu, then Allah knows what you are doing. Allah did not say what he will do, but say Allah knows what you are doing. This is the threat enough. In another ayah, Allah said, Ya Yuhaladina Amanu Kunu Qawamina Bilillah, stand firm to Allah and we witnesses injustice. So it's reversing. In that one, be 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 standing for justice and show that witness for Allah. And this one is the reverse, which is also valid. Stand firm for Allah and be sure we witnesses by justice. And don't let the, the hatred of certain people uh, instigate you to be unjust. Be just. That's closer to piety, closer to taqwa. And be, beware of Allah. Allah is very well aware what you are doing. So this is a fundamental obligation. It's very difficult to fulfill, no doubt about that. That's the reason that many, many, we have many witnesses who are, who are witnessing, witnessing a falsehood. We have even witnesses who are shahood zur, which bring them close to kufr and shirk, like for Islam, the shahadat al zur, the false witness under oath in the court, is close to shirk of association with our partner in sinfulness. That happens, but does not negate the obligation. Now we have obligation, this historic endeavor, to stand fair for the truth. For example, the dispute with Ali and Muawiyah. And if we know that by Tawatr, established by Tawatr, that Muawiyah is the leader of Fiat al baghiyah that must be stated. And the Al-Baghi cannot be, cannot be the just one, and the one praised one, and the one who's worthy of, of ruling, and that he usurped the power by force, and killed thousands of people, 10,000 people after that, like in the recent publication of summer of Jundum, with evidences on Tawatr and so on, has to be witnessed for and stated clearly. So what does it mean to hold away from the Sahara? 
cover up. Besides, the ayah does not address that issue anyway. But they try with this ayah to intimidate the people. Oh, no, leave that to Allah. He will judge you on the Qiyam. No, no. You have to judge in dunya because this happened in dunya in front of eyes and led to results in the Muslim world and the uh, government system and deviation from Shura and deviation from the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That has to be witnessed and to be put to the point, has to be put to the dots, has to be on every letter as it should be. And the amazing thing is that, okay, you may say this is a good advice for people who do not know about these, these, these complicated things and try to avoid it, etc., etc. That's fine. But they put it even in the books of Aqaid, which is completed calamity. Putting that in the book of Aqaid is almost getting, getting almost to the border of Kufr, but this cannot be Aqidah. That's not Aqidah. The Aqidah is that what the ayah said, what he said in Surah Al-Baqarah. This is a nation which has passed. We will not be asked about their sin or make an account of it all, but does not mean that we are not, uh, we're not uh, permitted to make the wrong witness. Uh, we are not allowed for Ibrahim and so we don't know what they are. No, we have to witness that they have reported to Allah Sadaala and they will write us. It does not, it does not give us a leeway to, to say otherwise. Because you know, we, we hold back, we don't know if, if what the Old Testament is saying about Harun that he made the golden calf is correct or not. No, no. Quran says he did not do. And he was oppressed by his people, and they fabricated the story against him. We have to sit like witness for this truth. The same with the Sahaba, the same with every generation. When we analyze historical terms, it's not that we are, we are evaluating uh, and making accounting of the Qiyamah, leave the accounting of the Qiyamah. But what is the evaluation in dunya according to the term of dunya? Is that Bari? Is this transgression? Because Bari and transgression are facts which can happen in the world, and we can judge them, we can analyze them. And we sue someone who made bari against us to the court. Otherwise, what? Why are you are suing people who commit a transgression and justice against us to the court? We just say, no, we don't dispute what happened between Muslims. We should avoid fitna. Uh, actually, it has developed to that level in some Muslims. So, oh, Muslims, especially if they are in the domain of Kufr, avoid this friction because it's called fitna. No, so that that is the, that avoiding is called the bigger fitna. We cover up. Uh, Messing Islamic life, especially if it's covering up for rulers, and this doesn't mean a messing government system. And what we have seen since Muawiyah onward until now, no real correction of the government system ever happened, except of a short attempt of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz and a half and half attempt from uh, from Al Ma'mud and a few others. There's no, no good accounting, continuous cover up. Let me give you a shocking story, maybe. But I, I didn't, I could not get the really sufficient reference for it. But if it's true, it's a calamity. Everyone knows how much the praise in the historic books about Harun al-Rashid, etc., etc., etc. And that he was making call, especially from Salafi and then it's called Ahl Sunnah. Make a ghazu one year, and make a ghazu could be political. <laughs> Getting the people fighting a foreign enemy is a classical trick of tyrants. To divert the people from this for, for, for their for their politics and their their theft from the treasury. But let's leave that aside. Someone once claimed, I could not verify it, take that clearly on that point, that the communication of that he read somewhere, I, I want still session for that, and it's worth maybe someone who's interested in history, that Harun Rashid communication with uh, Karl, uh, Karl the Great, Charlemagne, the famous uh, emperor of the of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation, Charlemagne, which is uh, the uh, grandson of uh, Charles, the, the Hamad, Charles the Martel, the one who defeated the Muslims in, uh, in uh, Tour Boitier and ended the advance in Europe for forever until now, at least. That the communication with him, uh, with Charlemagne, was, with the, uh, was to instigate him and move on and ask him to move against the Muslims in Spain because they, the Muslim Spain have split away and they have the Bani Umayyah ruling them. And he said, That one, well, I think it was in a tweet. I told him, If that's true, give me the references and so on, which were the ancient books, the ancient historian which are living really at that time. And most of that is really written by the contemporary. So this is, we can regard that as a very solid history and will establish history. Um, give me the reason, because if he has done that, if it is true, then he committed an act of kufr, and we have to care him. You cannot ally with a kufar against Muslims, even if I split away and fighting you. You fight against them, bring them back to, to, to obedience, 
and possibly you can take the help of God under your banner or your own agenda, but definitely uh, Charlemagne will not be under the banner of Harun Rashid, nor in his head. If this is true, let me repeat it. But if that's true, this man committed an act of kufr. We have to say it clearly and condemn him and even curse him for that. That's being standing firm in justice and witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And commenting on history as it will Will he be in Jahannam? Maybe not. Maybe he has a ta'weed. Maybe his, 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 he thought this is right and he has the right to do that. Maybe he has a, a wrong fatwa. We don't know. That's why I'm a qiyamah. That's not all. But for dunya, in the dunya rulings, is that for us it is. And for us, it will, if it is well established and can ascertain it, then we have declared that he committed an act of kufr and he is the worthy of, of cursing of our side. And we have the right to curse him. What Allah does with him, that's for Allah. Allah knows more, knows everything. It's very important to, to recognize that this 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 uh, this, uh, this statement in Tahawiya, we don't uh, in, enter in the dispute between the Sahaba and then they, they invoke this ayah and similar ayahs. It's a complete, fundamental violation of our right, of our obligation to stand for a long witness even against ourselves and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and the Ummah who has to witness against itself for the transgression of the rules and what they did, which what they did in their, their conquest was they claimed to be an Islamic conquest. Most of it was not Islamic, was for power and, and, and disputes with other nations, not in any ways from uh, Islamic ways, mostly. Sometimes it's on Islamic ways, sometimes it's not. And has to be sorted out and scrutinized properly. We have to do that witness. So that Islam will be presented to the world and Islamic history presented as it is, as a true history, not as an imaginary history which covers up for crimes committed by some rulers and by some Muslims. No. That will not be doing the, 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 the proper witness for Allah and, 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 and standing for justice. And it will not be, be, be good for, for, for our own self understanding and not be good for correcting all of the past and moving forward in the future. Won't be good. But the calamity for me at this moment is really that this has been this this nonsense has been sneaking in the books of Aqaid and they've taught it as Aqidah. This should be crossed out of these books. This is the word. This is one. But in these books are another message. I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned earlier or something. In, in this book, for example, uh, uh, say uh, the, the Mas'ha al-Khufayn that you can wipe on the Khufayn is, is regarded as part of Aqidah. Why? <laughs> Because, they regard, because the Shia has rejected that up to the mistaken uh, assumption that the narration came only from Mughir ibn Shu'bah, who is very questionable in their point of view. I said, actually, it's questionable in every point of view. But it's not true. Actually, the main narration is from Ali ibn Abi Talib himself and, and many other Sahaba. It's mutawatir. But even that does not make it a, a book, in the book of Aqidah. If you ask them, just to affirm and show that the Shia are wrong. That's not the way Aqidah books should be written. Aqidah should be written the same the Quran mentioned what happened. Uh, what with the Millat Ibrahim, the Creed of Ibrahim, the Ibrahim, why him of the of the Khuf or not? Why is it irrelevant? If it is established from Allah, it is good. okay. If it's not established from Allah, then it is nothing. That's it. That's the Aqeed. Not that it's driving with the Khuf or not driving with the Khuf uh, belongs to the Book of Aqeedah. It's here it is in Islamic literature and in the Book of Aqeedah, there is some, some massive blunders and, 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 uh, and mistakes which have to be cleaned. And we have to we have to do the witness statement. We have to do we have to stand firm and for, for justice and make witness for Allah that is wrong and has to be cleaned and do action the way it's needed. Otherwise, there is no hope ever to to return to the revelation as revealed to Muhammad as enacted to a great to almost hundred percent level of, of, of perfection with with the with the, with the Rashidin. Not 100% because nobody can after Muhammad be 100%, but close to 100%. And after that was the break when the tyranny started with Muawiyah. If we want to return to that and have a modern Islamic state in the 21st century and the Ummah resurging and advancing, the first step is to clean history and concise it and not to restore to such ayah, misunderstand them and misapply them rather to the fundamental undisputed obligation to stand firm and be witnesses over ourselves and even the parents and the close of kin and the rich and the poor and everyone else, combining and non-combining. I think this, this is it's important to make this comment, uh, comment in this point because this ayah is abused mostly by Wahhabi Salafi, but also by many of Sunnah and, and uh, presented to the people as, oh, that's it, that's it. 
that's with the, the proper justification of that nonsense, which is in Fahawiya. That nonsense should, should be cut out of Fahawiya. A new edition should be presented to the people. A, mod a modified edition. Unfortunately, until now, nobody dared doing that, either afraid of the common public or do not have the scholarly capability or just uh, beating around the bush. Do not want to offend the others. No, we have to offend the others of this history. We have to stand firm for Allah and make witnesses for Allah and the, and, and the truth and justice. Otherwise, we'll never prosper or advance forward. So that's, I think this is, uh, this is uh, a little bit of, of uh, like uh, ranting against some of these called Aqidah books, but I think it's, it, it's, it's needed and should not be, this, this occasion should not be missed to, uh, to condemn this, this kind of writings and to expose what it's, it's with all respect of Ahawi and so on, but this is not acceptable. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. This should end. We have to do our job in ending that and cleaning this mess. Then there's a hope that the Khilafah Alam in Hajj Nubuwa will come back. Otherwise, it will not come. Forget about it. It's never, it will never happen. Maybe that's one of the reasons that all these attempts to achieve anything, uh, like uh, the failure of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and so on, goes to that route, that they did not go to the to square one and clean the best stuff in there. I know it is difficult. I know it is a problem, but you have to do it. And we have to do it. And maybe this is also the only reason his did not achieve anything. He got stuck with nothing. He got stuck, for example, with, uh, essentially accepting his old Ba'aqidah book. All the Hizb did clean a few issues there. No doubt about that, much better than the Muslim Brotherhood. But if you look, for example, in uh, its its uh, vision of the of the government system, it's essentially al Mawardi. And the Mawardi is the justification of the tyranny of the Abbasi and Bani Umayyah. And everywhere in Mawardi and Abbasi, uh, Muawiyah is the model. So, if you get that system, what you get? <laughs> you, you get something, maybe maybe the Communist Party is better, a little bit better than it. So, I'm better joined than the Communist Party. Then. So, the hell with that system of Mawardi. If that's just the result to be that Muawiyah kills and his, 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 uh, uh, his uh, men in, in Iraq, like Samar bin Jundab and Ziyad, the one who would. Uh, uh, denounced his own father and uh, 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 accepted to be a uh, father of Zina, or Abu Sufyan, uh, they, they killed tens of thousands of people. Yeah, tens of thousands. Read uh, uh, Let's translate some of the Jundam and read them with the evidences there about what they did. And then, and then this is almost the Communist Party of China. <laughs> what can do Islam with that? We can wash our hands. <laughs> Maybe better to become than an atheist or if that's the, the proper Islamic ruling system. I'm saying it frankly. I'm very, it's very bitter, but it's like we have to swallow this bitter bill, otherwise, we don't have to advance. Unless we condemn that, starting with Ma'awi, and condemn the conclusions with the Fuqaha did about that, even if they may have best intention. Maybe they wanted to save the day. Maybe they, whatever. Or some of them may be traitors. All of that is possible. But as it should not prevent us that objectively, this is not. Uh, not a ruling, uh, ruling system of Islam. And this is a catastrophe which broke the back of this Islamic, spreading Islam in the world uh, as it should have been. But still Islam spread on the power, the eternal power of Islam, on the good action of the Sahaba. And that's the reason any any place which were conquered with the Sahaba has the barakah of the Sahaba, and this with us in Islam until now. Places which have been so-called conquered after that have the, have the negative, bad omen of Bani Umayyah like Andalus, like other places, and they lost for Islam now. Look at that alone. See the difference between Baraka. But this is by the eternal strength of Islam and the devotion of the Islamic scholar and the da'ya, not by the rulers. Look in Hind, for example, at the time Akbar, who almost became a Hindu. There was a considerable number of, con of, 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 of conversion there, several millions. Who did it? Not Akbar. Mawlana Ahmed Sarhandi. So these are the ones who spread Islam. Not these conquerors who are invading countries and so on to increase their kingdom and, uh, and snatch as much as possible of wealth and so on. Although they, despite all the, the Islamic limitation and the presence of some scholar who stopped them from being extreme, made them conquest as much better, a thousand times better than the European conquest and so on. Definitely, there's no doubt about that. But still, Still, it's not, not the ideal. It contains transgression, it contains injustice, it contains negative things which have been exposed and condemned and show that they're not Islamic. And attributed to, its, to the mischief of certain people, understood. 
That's very important for the truth itself and also for explaining Islam from this from the principle, which have these rulers over the history have done to Islam in many places and in many, many occasions. Anyway, I think I have I have done like, like a sermon of anti anti Muslim rulers since Muawiyah sermon, <laughs> which I think is uh, is badly needed in, in this time. But don't expect any real progress towards. Uh, real leadership of Islam and real Islamic government with, with, with the real Islamic government craft of justice, of control of the treasury, of no penny can go into, into, into the wrong pockets, etc. unless you have cleared this mess, historically and also ideologically and fiqh-wise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There's a question in the comment section. Um, Someone asked a summary of Samurai Big Jumdu. Um, are you able to give some more details at this juncture, or would, would you like to? No, no, the, the, the work is, is, is available. We just need to be translated. It's publicized. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I suppose, uh, Ismail, we probably have to wait for that one. Um, there's an also an observation the brother made about the longest word is in Surah Hijr. Hirj, Hirj, or Hijr, uh, yeah. Maybe I will check it. Maybe that's the longer. No, this is not the longest. This is longer. Just count it. Besides that one, that one. Okay, that's the longest. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 And no other Yusaki Sayaksi Kahumullah Saki Sayaksi Kahumullah. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, this is the I think longer by one by, by one letter and it has five components, mm -hmm. so it's still longer than one in, in, in Hijab. Okay, all right. Um, any other questions? I think it's, it's forward. The other things are general philosophical and the Aqidah discussion, which will clarify you more and more when we read the Quran, inshallah.